Now let's welcome Dara Barwath. Thank you. Um, thanks to Wave Books and to Charlie Wright, and thanks to um, Joshua Beckman and Matthew Zapruder and Heidi Broadhead and Bliss Irvin, and especially to tonight's host, Catherine Bresner. I'm also really, really thrilled to be reading with everybody tonight and kicking off this exciting reading. I'm really happy to be here. And thank you all who are here in various places and wherever you are. So this first poem is called, If You Are Lucky. If you are lucky, the same person will fall in love with you over and over again. If you are lucky, if your luck calls out over and over, the same one will fall out of love with you in order to fall back in. It is an excruciating process. Nonetheless, it is necessary. You will need to be prepared to recognize someone's love for you, as well as be prepared to follow it as it wanes and waxes. Unfortunately, this means you will need to endure long stretches without love. And these you will need to endure with patience and grace in order to be prepared for love when it comes and love when it disappears with the strength you've gained because you've read poems and novels and stories and you've watched movies and looked at pictures and you've lived with animals and you've loved them. And by virtue of all these things, you've practiced feeling something as complicating as love without end and as complicating as love no more. You have kept up in practice. You will be able to take what love throws your way because stories and poems have wrung your heart and shattered your brain over and over again to watch you change. So now you are ready. So when Wednesdays that will never end come and the necessary days without nights, try not to th think of them. They will destroy you. The bright days with no love, the short day without end. For those days be glad, as patient as a glacier or one big starving panther waiting for its prey. Every time love comes, you will stand there and stand it, or it will come again no more. Sunset sex. It always spreads itself across the sky as if it belongs there and nowhere else. It reiterates what the horizon wants before the horizon shows itself wanting. It makes what happens to want to be satisfied. It lays down everything it is in order to be everywhere. It wants, so it waits, it waits while it gives, it gives as it takes while time dissolves and matter is no longer of concern. What is of concern goes without saying. Without saying, desire is given, desire, is sometimes water. Things art can do, part one and part two. This could be you. No longer who you were is who this is. This is how it feels, being someone elsewhere in eternity. There is something infinite about him, she said. There is something infinite. There is, there's something definite about you, he said. There was nothing infinite about him. He was finite, like a simile. A few of the crimes you've committed against my heart. Arson, most of all, arson. Tongues of flame, flare, lick, like, and like. I like fire and I like water and a good flaring, larceny, a little bit of larceny, 
treason, exquisitely executed, peppered with a few petty kickbacks, like in self-serve brain surgery, in and out same day service, in a bargain up kind of way, you committed fog against me. You committed horses. You attacked me with hummingbirds. You ambushed me with iridescence. You scalped me with trees. I'm in a, you pushed I'm me in over zoom, the edge zoom thing. with bumblebees. You broke into me with gills, me with lungs under my wings, with books you electrocuted me, with words you tore me to pieces, with wildfire you blinded me, when, with inferotemporal neurons you swindled me, you strangled me with satellites, with time and distance you slayed me, you pepper sprayed me with music, you took out my eyes, so you said, to polish them up a little. You stole my petticoat, my pretty chemise. You oversalted me with blizzards. You committed rain against me. You committed sharks against me. With rivers and meadows and mountains, you lied to me. With canyons and fog shrouded peaks, you hid ravens there to kidnap me. You burned me with songbirds and nightfall and morning. You scalded me with flocks. You stole my tongue with tides. With all of this, you set me down. I have a little extra mercy. Do you want some? You can have some. Within a whittled down whisper, too smooth to be denied. I said, sure. A little mercy has been said to go a long way. I'd be pleased to have some, if you have some to spare. So commenced my appearance in several severed hearts in the midst of the deep wide middle near the pulse of steaming hot heartbeats meddled with mindscapes. Strangely believing mercy is not something always in need of being found. Capitalism. It makes me feel about as low as ASAP makes me feel, as if someone is warning me a snake's in my path, only it's a pretty snake I'm in need of to take my whole life. There are so many kinds of us coming in various versions of ourselves and one another. There is a type whose bold sense of entitlement is bolstered by an unquestioned innate sense of righteousness, heady combinations, something calling for constant comparison, something sometimes useful other times, blindingly obliterating to beauty, grace, love, empathy, sympathy, insight, courage, insight, courage, humor, love, grace, humor, wit, foresight, generosity, love, humor, truth, empathy, grace, sympathy, empathy, sincerity, grace, truth, beauty, with courage, adventuresomeness, surprise, love, humor, empathy, kindness, withholding, judgment, love, humor, empathy, recklessness, generosity, love, humor, despair, understanding, love, humor, empathy, recklessness, love, humor, despair, loving kindness, love, humor, empathy, humor, joy, sympathy, love, kindness, courage. Thank you all so much. It was great to be here. And now, Lynn Shu. Thank you so much, Dara. And thank you, everyone at Wave Books, Catherine, Heidi, um, Bliss, Joshua. I mean, everyone. And also, everyone that I'm reading with again, Dara, Lainey, Robin, um, Doris, Dolores, I'm sorry, Dolores, and 
um, Renee. I am, thank you for letting me be in such good company. Uh, la, 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 um, I have somebody who will probably be reading with me tonight. Uh, la, la, la. Um, this person, I mean this person, her name is Lorca. And uh, I, I think that it might be helpful just to show you what you can read along with me. So I'm gonna share my screen. Do I do this again? Um, this one. I haven't done this for a while. Whoa. Is that not, this is not what I want. You, full screen. Here we go. So this is what the page looks like. Can you guys all see it? Okay, great. So I'll just read two sections from, from the book. Um, and as the procession before me fled, one seemed to know as one whose years the mask and smokeless altars interpose incessantly numerous as the dead from whose forms shadows pass. And of that great crowd rearranged the thrush and thrift and edelweiss, a shape whose garments in the changing seasons as yet formless against the trembling like the lifting of a veil. As in autumn time, the leaves borne onward by what through eternity re-echoes, echoes still in untilled fields, the soft and ceaseless song, unchilding, unfathering, unanimous, a shape all light, thoroughly half spoken, a singing, so to speak, that pass through wood and worm before the breathless bee. And having labored timeward through remaining time, what over the bent world life must borrow that farthest nothing, that incandescent plural of the unopened handful. There the sun lingered and soft as wind it passes, pure moon of the doorway, pure zero in the diadems of the coffer's edge the empty cart clattering one to 10, 10 to one. All things unclose their portions in the hour of distribution of the balancing of accounts and those who fight for a few scraps of food to renew each day unguarded by the angels. At last, all life passes through the smiling air. Windows open noiselessly as one that in a silver vision floats, already decembering with the aggregate of time's eternity. And life in that black or luminous square, life lives, repeating thriftless shadow beneath the few branches galloping through night. Clear stream, wooden horse, blue sword, awaiting the small few acts sorry, awaiting the few small acts of cowardice still to come. From my pure throat and the tongue close behind, I have come to trip over the woman who has given birth. Gelatinous contrapuntal, bamboozled at last and screaming again screams of the newborn since she was there also and keeps me from my childhood, born, born, born. Orphan with the middle eye, with brains of the butterfly. Between us plus minus scuffed tips shimmering in the circular lamp, that pell-mell night enduring mouth, scram, get lost. Pick yourself off, you who grovel in the street, you who were born on the zero, sorry, on the road to a quivering zero, profit poor conspiring, I apply exact numbers, the advancing sovereign spatula, and I ripen with my virginity where the void hustles to the bottom. And quivering just a little, Lick my finger, stroke the tip and urinate in the middle and look at the stars and quivering just a little and lick my fingers and stroke the tip and urinate in the middle of the basin and the two dippers dipping one into the other. Remember, angels weave you 
a bearded three-fourth scale redoubled on the forehead appearing by the slow piano of her hand. Two times nine is 18. Three times nine is 27. Four times nine is 36. Five times nine is 45. Six times nine is 54. Seven times nine is 63. Eight times nine is 72. Nine times nine is 81. One plus eight is nine. Two plus seven is nine. Three plus six is nine. Four plus five is nine. The hour arranging four bright columns beyond the corridor of the empty child. Someone, the fifth column, remainder of the triangle, advances like a bell in the afternoon. Okay, I think that's all. And I think the next readers will be Dolores Durantes and Robin Myers. Um, I'm so excited to hear you guys read. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lynn. And thank you to the incredible team at WAVE for being so supportive and extraordinary. Uh, thank you all for being here, it's a delight to hear Dara, Lynn, Renee, Lainey, and I just want to thank Dolores for the opportunity to translate her work and to collaborate with her in this way. Um, I'm going to begin by reading the two epigraphs to copy, which are both from the Palestinian writer Mahmoud Darwish, um, translated by Sinan and Tun, and then Dolores and I will go back and forth between her original Spanish and the translation. This is I, this is he. This is the miserable one, son of the miserable man and miserable woman, son of your water and fire. I came from you, from nothingness, from one of your old poems, I came. I came from the imagination to return it to you and to carve your name in stone like all the other poets of this race land. I asked a mule about its father and it said to me, my uncle is a horse, then it disappeared. I asked a girl about her father. She became shy and she said, perhaps it is you, and then she slipped into the fog. I asked a lark that was whispering to its mother about its mother. It approached and said, perhaps she is you, so please carry me, and it slept in my hand. I asked myself, who am I? The nocturnal echo around me responded, who am I? This is I, this is he, this is all of my imagination. And the second one, but expressing emotions, they say, is not one of the attributes of exile. Desanejarse, transformarse, apartarse de su condición, Desangramiento, acción y efecto de desangrar o desangrarse. Desangrar, sainer, to bleed, ablasen, disanguare, desangrar. Sacar la sangre a una persona o a un animal, en gran copia. Agotar o desaguar un lago, estanque, etc. Empobrecer a uno insensiblemente. Perder mucha sangre, perderla toda. De sangre, de sangramiento, de sanidad. Dejar las aves el nido, sacar o echar de un sitio o lugar. La proactividad, experimentación y apertura que definen el diseño de entornos se corresponde también con una fuerte actitud de respeto. Esta actitud debe guiar todo proceso el respeto de las formas básicas y de ciertos principios que gobiernan los entornos responde tanto a una ética como a un criterio operativo. En ningún momento esta actitud respetuosa reprime la proactividad que crea e innova. Por el contrario, esta actitud tiende a evitar el oportunismo y la depredación de bienes, recursos, 
y espacios que son comunes. The proactivity, experimentation, and openness that define the field of environmental design are accompanied by a profound sense of respect. This attitude must guide all of its processes. Through respect for basic forms and certain environment shaping principles, both ethics and operational standards are ensured. This respectful attitude never suppresses creative, innovative forms of proactivity. On the contrary, such an attitude tends to avoid opportunism and the plunder of shared goods, resources, and spaces. Se vuelve cada vez más tenue la capacidad de compasión. El cumplimiento del deber es el motivo de la vida bajo presión social. La línea de la responsabilidad personal se vuelve cada vez más tenue. Escapar, escapar de la responsabilidad. Escapar de la responsabilidad a través del cumplimiento del deber. Someterse. Tú eres tú y cada vez más tenue, en gran copia, escapar de la compasión. El comportamiento solo obedece a una serie de abstracciones, actúa en cumplimiento del deber, sin responsabilidad personal. Se integra, huye del abandono bajo presión social, no admite el miedo, no acepta el dolor insensiblemente. Se niega a sí mismo, punto central del gozo y el dolor, tan tenue. Busca con boca abierta, como en las épocas de infancia. Busca como si se tratara del lugar materno, con la boca, obedecer. Bajo presión social, el anzuelo que se refuerza y se transforma de acuerdo a la estructura. Te estás borrando, sin responsabilidad personal el lugar de la torre que vigila, la torre con su boca de anzuelo, empobrecida insensiblemente, perder la sangre, perderla toda. En esa niebla el cumplimiento del deber y la responsabilidad son ya la misma circunstancia. En trabajosa construcción, la cárcel de la identidad, la identidad de 40 horas por semana, dar la vida en cumplimiento del deber, quitar la vida en cumplimiento del deber, empobrecido, insensiblemente, huyendo del dolor, sin compasión. Te estás borrando. Eres un set clavado con los hilos de las circunstancias, presión social, ahí, en el punto central del gozo y el dolor, contigo mismo, tú y no tú, juntos. Uno amordazado y el otro sometido obedece en cumplimiento del deber contigo mismo. El gozo y el dolor en secreto ensamblan en trabajosa construcción, borrando. Todos hemos tenido esa misma experiencia, el gozo y el dolor, distorsionada, bajo presión social, el gozo y el dolor de los otros, bajo presión social que abre la boca, que busca en todos los sentidos, la fuerza de la naturaleza bajo presión social que busca con la boca, la inmediatez de los sentidos para comunicar, 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 el punto central consigo mismo, el gozo y el dolor de los otros, el sentido verdadero del mundo en trabajosa construcción desde la infancia, todos hemos tenido esa experiencia, alejados de nuestro propio sentimiento, comunicar, abrir la boca para que entre el anzuelo, en esa niebla donde se trasluce la sangre, perderla, perderla toda, en cumplimiento del deber porque nos parece la misma cosa, la habilidad para distinguir en esa niebla la responsabilidad y el cumplimiento del deber, dar o quitar la vida, la habilidad para distinguir en qué momento desde la propia lengua nos llama ese broche, traspasando la niebla, la sangre, la sangre traspasando la niebla, abrir, abrir la mano y la memoria, comunicar. It gets fainter and fainter, the capacity for compassion. Life's purpose is the fulfillment of duty under social pressure. The line of personal responsibility grows fainter and fainter to escape, to escape responsibility, to escape responsibility through the fulfillment of duty, to submit, 
You are you, fainter and fainter, to escape compassion copiously. Behavior only obeys a series of abstractions. It acts in fulfillment of duty without personal responsibility. It integrates itself, flees abandonment under social pressure. It doesn't admit fear. It doesn't accept pain callously. It denies itself the central point of pleasure and pain, so faint. It searches open-mouthed like the child you were. It searches as if searching for the maternal sight with its mouth to obey. Under social pressure, the hook that strengthens and is transformed according to the structure. You're vanishing without personal responsibility. The sight of the watchtower, the tower with its hook mouth, callously impoverished. To lose one's blood, to lose all of it. In this fog, the fulfillment of duty and responsibility are now a self-same circumstance under laborious construction, the prison of identity, the identity of 40 hours a week, to give life in fulfillment of duty, to take life in fulfillment of duty, callously impoverished, fleeing from pain without compassion. You're vanishing, you're a set pinned with the threads of the circumstances, social pressure. There, in the focal point of pleasure and pain, with yourself. You and not you, together, one muzzled and the other submitted, obeying in fulfillment of duty, with yourself. Pleasure and pain assembling in secret, under laborious construction, vanishing. We've all had the same experience, pleasure and pain distorted under social pressure, the pleasure and pain of others under social pressure that opens its mouth, that searches in every sense, the force of nature under social pressure searching with its mouth, the immediacy of the senses to communicate, to communicate, to communicate the focal point with itself, the pleasure and pain of others, the true meaning of the world under laborious construction since childhood. We've all had this experience far from our own feeling to communicate, to open the mouth for the hook to slip in, in this fog where the blood shows through, to lose it, to lose all of it, in fulfillment of duty because we think it's the same, the ability to see in all that fog, responsibility, the fulfillment of duty, to give or take life, the ability to see the clasp calling out to us in our own tongue, and at which moment seeping through the fog. Blood, the blood seeping through the fog, to open, to open one's hand and memory, to communicate. Hacer es deshacer, en gran copia. Tú vives porque alguien echó luz suficiente a la orilla de la carretera, la descomposición de la luz. Tú vives porque te apartaste de tu condición mientras tu familia, encerrada entre el fuego, rezaba deshaciendo la oscuridad y la sustancia. Hacer es deshacer. Tú vives porque los militares plantearon su marcha y sus retenes por encima del nido. Los militares hundieron con tu sangre un refugio seguro, perder la sangre perderla toda, perder la identidad. Tú vives como animal o como habitación echada de su sitio, perder lugar, perder piso, perder la dirección, porque es justo ese dejar las aves, agotar el estanque, empobrecerse insensiblemente, transformarse, lo que abrazaste tanto como a la vida. To do is to undo copiously. You live because someone cast enough light onto the edge of the highway, the decomposition of light. You live because you removed yourself from your condition while your family prayed, trapped in the fire, undoing darkness and substance. To do is to undo. You live because the soldiers set their march and their checkpoints above the nest. The soldiers plotted a safe shelter with your blood to lose one's blood, to lose all of it, to lose one's identity. You live 
like an animal or like a room ousted from its place, to lose one's place, to lose one's mind, to lose one's address. Because it's precisely this bird leaving the nest, draining the pond to be callously impoverished, to be transformed, that you embraced as you embraced life. Lugar común, sentir, un orden, la descomposición de la sangre, perder la orilla, perder el principio, perder el lugar, abrazaste la descomposición tanto como a la vida, lugar común, sentir, un orden, cuando cruzabas los retenes abrazaste también ese dejar las aves, cuando te interrogaban abrazaste también ese agotar, ese sacar la sangre a una persona o animal. Tu mirada se concentró en el lago. Tú vives porque la luna tocó la piedra que sobresalía en el estanque para señalarte en gran copia sus filos. Te aferraste a la depredación. Te aferraste al oportunismo. Te aferraste a la proactividad. A commonplace, to feel, an order, the decomposition of blood to lose the edge, to lose the start, to lose one's place. You embraced decomposition as you embraced life, a commonplace to feel, an order. When you crossed the checkpoints, you also embraced this bird leaving the nest. When they'd interrogate you, you also embraced this draining, this extracting the blood of a person or animal. Your gaze focused on the lake. You live because the moon touched the stone jutting out of the pond to show you copiously its edges. You clung to predation. You clung to opportunism. You clung to proactivity. Volverse a armar. La proactividad. El oportunismo. Un orden. Una lengua que parte. Un ademán que zarpa. Un lugar singular. Tú eres el que responde las interrogaciones, el que se detiene identidad en mano en cada retén, en gran copia. Tú y no yo eres el perdedor, en gran copia, el mal tráfico, el sospechoso de la rabia que se derrama sobre el mundo. Tú eres el que se ahoga en su propia sombra. Tú vives porque otros 500 soldados se encargaron de tu desaparición, volverse a armar. Tú y no yo es quien responde. Mi pecho no esconde más que la miel oscura del que no tiene sitio ni salida. To reassemble oneself, proactivity, opportunism, an order, a tongue leaving, a gesture, setting sail, a singular place. You're the one who answers the interrogations, the one who stops, identity in hand, at every checkpoint, copiously. You, not I, are the loser, copiously the bad traffic suspect of the rage spilling out onto the world. You're the one drowning in your own shadow. You live because another 500 soldiers were tasked with your disappearance to reassemble oneself. You, not I, are the one who responds. My chest hides nothing but the dark honey of the one with neither place nor exit. Las interrogaciones. Tú no tienes sitio ni salida. Tú vives porque otros tomaron con respeto tu desaparición. Tú y no yo es el que debe quedarse bien despierto. La imagen de la prisión y sus mil formas en las que se levanta y se derrumba. Las interrogaciones, apartado de tu condición, diseñando los entornos de tus prisiones infinitas, oportunismo, proactividad, el que no duerme vigilando las condiciones de respeto porque te hiciste desaparecer porque abres la sombra de tu mano cuando el miedo circula. Tú y no yo vive aterrorizado por los armamentos y las posiciones, perseguido entre las grietas de los países por su misma depredación. The interrogations. You have neither place nor exit. You live because others took your disappearance respectfully. You, not I, are the one who'd better stay wide awake the image of the prison and its thousand ways of rising up and caving in, the interrogations removed from your condition, designing the environments of your infinite prisons, opportunism, proactivity, 
the sleepless one, monitoring the conditions of respect because you made yourself disappear, because you open the shadow of your hand when fear starts to circle. You, not I, live in terror of the weapons and positions pursued between the cracks of countries by their very predation. Thank you. You're lucky enough to get to hear Renee Gladman next. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Dolores and Robin, for that really powerful reading. And um, Lynn, who came before, and Dara, who started us off. And I'm really excited to uh, end the evening with Lainey. Um, I also want to um, briefly thank WAVE for this incredible book. They've, they've done two beautiful books for me um, in the past. And this new one is just, um, I, I just, I almost cried or maybe I did cry a little bit when I opened this. It's just gorgeous and I can't wait for you all to see it. It's heavy, it's beautiful, it's pristine. Um, so I wanna thank everyone um, at WAVE for, for that. So I'm going to read from Plans for Sentences, um, which is a, a book of sentences that are both drawn and written. And um, I, I'm just going to give you a brief picture of what the um, so you have a drawing on the the left side of the page and text. Is that right? Left, right. Text on the right. Um, so um, each drawing is a plan for sentences. Um, each text is like a figure for the drawing. Um, and each figure is composed of about um, two to three captions, depending. So uh, I have about 15 that I'm going to read to you. They go really fast. Um, so and I have to share my screen to do this with you. Okay. I'm going to, this wasn't planned, but I, I want to read the sentence that opens the book that is not accompanied by a, a drawing. And it says, these sentences, they will begin having already been sentences somewhere else, and this will mark their afterlife and this will be their debut. So I'm going to start with, this is figure 35, 34. These sentences will be the collective wandering about change. They will grain and blacken in the wings where the paragraph breaks open and will congregate around the question, are we fine? These sentences will have vectors that enter where they edge and will go to hollows, will curve to void and cleave to edge. They will funnel 14 times and void. They will slope from trying. Figure 35. These places will glow and will void and stick like wet leaves at the window, partitioning thought, condensing the gaps to grains. They will roll forward, backward, will roll and contract breathing. They will antenna the opening. These sentences will be the breathing on the other side of the paragraph. They will open and roll and roll and go quiet, backward over spent breath, graining the vapors. These sentences will arrive in a weather system. They will glow and pound the coast. Figure 36. These will hang in staggered formation for what you're saying and will corner and roll. They will be the glowing chapters and will show the ley lines beneath the weather report. They will name little waters that comma, that lean. These places will let evening glow through. These places will let evening glow through them and outline thresholds of ascendant and descendant thinking. 
the floors will sphere with a notable absence of walls. Figure four. These sentences will flute and fold where the chapter crusts with questions. These will grain into a geometry of support, the history of something burrowing. These flutes will barge the void. They will silo and gather in horns draping and will take your place of speaking. They will erupt from the surface in an alternative mode of pointing and will stand variously and voidly under impulses to curve and flute. They will curve and flute without history. Figure five. These sentences will shade the block. They will form the substrate and shade. They will find their peaks and flutter in the corner. They will shade and flutter. These will climb the substrate. They will roll. They will roll and go quiet. They will roll a line burning into the surface. They will over backward and will over the start and over the interruption. They will roll and square the void. These sentences will strain the curve against the graining, the diagonal against the curve, and will burn equidistant to what unfolds. They will form a scaffold of ascending and descending clauses and will know space. They will not know space. Figure six. <clears throat> These sentences will be housed among paragraphs that roll and grain. They will move vertically toward the sky, will grain, will void, amassing tiny statements. These will crust a scaffold, will chapter the sight as it strikes, and will write the unwritten without pause. They will encumber to void. These sentences will cover the horizon from end to end as a kind of castellation of grains and threads and portals. These portals will constitute the loop inside the gap and will give the map levity. Figure eight. These sentences will have moved vertically up the wall and made the floor the grain and made the grain a kind of seismic modulate unfolding. These sentences will open the chapter on the electromagnetic and will be the reeling measure, the leaning narrowing measure that detects the underground. These sentences will thin the plane and scratch the void then cluster into undergrounds, a thinning of undergrounds. They will edge the void and blacken where they house. Figure 48. These sentences will be places of moss. These places will emerge from something thick Inside something glowing will light upon a series of dense clauses, a paragraph for the planet. These dense woods will hold the history of where we moss and where we blacken and will be the fog void inverted and full. Figure 49. These sentences will drop the nom nominative as a translation of sticks geometrically and will pull the number to the letter, will pour texture on the plane and cross the chapter. This chapter will comprise 465 passage, passages without words, and there will be a gray happening. These sentences will combine at dawn, intersecting sightlessly, and will not always say what they mean, but will be breathing. Figure 38, this chapter will ache a massive threading and glow. 
it will stand at the end of all chapters and reclaim its geometries. It will weather and glow in an overlay of forms and will buckle where it cleaves. These will be sentences that climb and blacken after fog, that fog out with wanting. They will roll tightly against the substrate, then will bellow. Figure 31, these sentences will river around silence and will out and vanish. They will roll out of light into light. Figure 26, these places will foment. They will send out fraying signals, will lean away from the hull and into the wing. They will be made of wind and will gasp, will allow gasp to become walls, then will bellow and fray. Figure 22. These sentences will ache a not knowing of forms and will on where they breathe. These sentences will move around an extending gasping a series of openings in the field, they will pour texture as an intervening and will on in the leaves, the chapter growing dark where they gather. These places will emerge out of a thinning that lifts the chapter and loops the plane that loops the void, making monuments. These sentences will grow grasses as the chapter ends and these grasses will signal the plane, but also cut the substrate, yet the structure will hold there will be gas. There will be gaps. Figure 28. These places will erupt along the line between worlds, visible and invisible. They will cluster along the substrate magnetically and will be a moving field. These will be sentences upon which is reflected something unseen seeing. They will foment where they empty, go quiet where they flood, be a staggering response to something missing, be a hull, a curve. They will sonar the erased. And this is the last I'll read and also the last in the book, figure 60. These sentences will be that <clears throat> Sorry. These sentences will be that day of cloud cover that shelters the unwritten, that unfolds as folds of invisible material in time. They will write lightlessly, they will glow and be dark and will graze the substrate, be a presence tilting the planet, one black, 12 longitudes. These places will have wind and fog and lines pulled up from the earth in an emergence of ground. They will funnel the void in an expanse of housing. They will be wallless. These places will be the last of it before the beginning sets in, emerging from the plain, dissolving it. They will out, they will up and flutter and through. They will out and quiet. They will blacken and open and will shelter these sentences will have shelter. Thank you. And now we will finish the night with Lainey Brown. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I also want to say tremendous thanks to Wave Books for all of the care. It's just phenomenal working with wave i'm really grateful and i'm so grateful to be reading in this extraordinary company tonight it was it's been fantastic um i began this book translation of the lilies um back into list with the idea of translating my daily to-do lists into poems uh, because the list making was becoming 
consuming, shall we say. I wanted something else from my, from my daily to-do list. So every poem in the book is a list poem and every poem is titled with a date. And the items of the list in the poem are not the tasks, but the thoughts surrounding the daily occupations. The title of the book is inspired by the poet C.D. Wright and her wonderful title, Translation of the Gospel Back into Tongues. The book begins in December of 2015 and continues through May of 2016. I'm gonna start by reading one poem in December, but then I will mostly read from March since that's where we are right now. And I just also wanted to show, I don't have my book yet, but here's a postcard with one collage in the book. Really grateful for that. December 31st, 2015, two. The daily takes too much time. Therefore, I propose to waking every second beginning each moment. The new year is just an excuse for counting. Numbers don't keep anyone safe. Ideas lurk in symbols and murders occur in figures. The squirrel runs up a tree, but we do not accuse him of squirrelishness or thievery or absent-mindedness. Where is substance buried? Shall I reply again? to your drawings, I'm leaving habit on a high shelf, going for a walk in sound. March 1st, 2016. I'm thrilled to hear from you, even though your last communication was leaden and accusatory. I don't have time for another no frills, high maintenance fright, still, I miss your damaged corona, your unkempt words, your willingness to rip into what no one else perceives. Finally, I have contracted the disease that everyone else in my family already has. A ghost put the milk in the cupboard. Sorry to hear about the weather. I send you this virtual sunray, even though I'm more conversant with the moon. Yes, I will be at that conference, but such a gathering is the best place for mismatched duels. Pretend it's only my mirage passing through frenetic halls. Yes, that's insight throbbing. Nothing personal except affection driven much too quickly. Considering traffic patterns and recent dreams, I'd say we have a 2000% chance of collision a game in which you stare at a pixelated image of the ocean, drop by drop fills an antechamber. When you collect enough water to make a tidal wave, which floods your room, you win. You will receive treasure in the form of golden coins, a global warming scenario, which makes as much sense as the current political climate. Mesmerized, I put my device down on your grandmother's buffet. Only as we drove away did I realize that her buffet was located on a busy street. Should we go back, you asked? It isn't so much that our words were dormant, inappropriate. The effect was to take charm and escort it out, along with defining moments, resuscitated secrets. March 2nd, 2016, one. I finally have an actual background behind me, all beige mist clouds and auditory monuments. On second thought, let's gather anything but onlookers, less disaster, more see-through pageants. Why they did not exchange relevant wavelengths, we'll never know. Your voice crests and brushes the tops of trees before crashing at my feet. Did you expect me to gather your recognition in my arms along with linens? Her first expert rendering was born in open fathoms. 
No document exists to check what comes next. Advice to myself, end early, cut the remaining splinters. Your entire head stacks higher. Your neck has so much work in so little time. Stand up straight to make room for lungs. Write letters like drawing breath, constant stream of permissions. It doesn't matter if anyone answers. Hard not to check over and over. When the message arrived, I thought I would burst, but a few hours later, I was standing in line behind every woe. No reason to be vigilant to the extent that you never get to pleasure. That's why I'm arguing with myself about want. You have to believe in enough. Your main resource is yourself, self of unknown origin. For instance, that virtual sun ray may be invisible in thunder, but I sent it directly inside your body. Hold up one palm toward the window. Even in weak light, you can access intuitive sources. If you think the ivy leaves are climbing up the bare trunk, waving, they probably are. If you think the wind was sent for that exact purpose to move you, you are not any worse off in assuming fanciful points of reference. Why not be in conversation with elements, nurse, tree spine, leaf hands, ungent heart. March 4th, 2016. The snowdrops were confused. Willfully, I turned off my electronic future and began by hand. If I spill myself out, the letters themselves appear helpless, yet they are solidity. Are words actually persons? Is that the only static truth? A hardbound book we can draw in. The time looked all the same. Why is one stream of quiet different from another? You disappeared, or spirit like darkness fanned out around me, cascades of slippery, opaque. Each icon departs with one incomplete action or instinct, the definition of bereft. One more day, I'll allow nonsense, your face from afar, disjointing. Help me with my thoughts, please. Bring paper. If the quality of your test results were completely reliant on fruit and candy, didn't Emerson say fruits and flowers are the best gifts? Carefully, I unpacked the day. Space is an entity, not just an idea. Motion of the moon, recorded in a bucket. When I left the studio, I contained something I did not have when I arrived. Not space and time ripped apart, but woven together. We love the future because we believe it will be ours. Put your anxiety to work. I want to be less of myself. Can you help me arrange to see less? Repeat this song. Whatever I had or did not have is yours. March 9th, 2016. Bonnie Prince Billy sings, I will be born. Is he talking about himself? Is there a difference between being one person or another? Waking without remembering dreams is like waking without hands. How to complete any simple action? I cleared my desk of the prints of former cups. Should I have read those markings before wiping them away, first with damp rag, then with dry cloth? I've strayed from divination because I'm not willing to know. When you first recorded what you needed to hear, you lived in a single cell. Later, you learned to divide. Not yourself, but those multiple beings beside you came to life, meaning to say, 
you decided to see them? And what if you only think you have no hands? Yesterday, I asked a fox to appear. This morning, a mottled fox dutifully trotted through breakfast, red and gray, deliberate and languid, delicate and revenant. Maybe you only think you don't see foxes or ask for visitation in place of divination. This morning I asked, where are you? Are you still near the other side of cognition? Does deciding to ask for visitations <laughs> draw you closer or is that only the fox? Nothing is only, only is furred. I thought I woke with nothing, but I woke with you beside me. I thought I woke, but you were still a promise to remember. If there is nothing to fear, why is nothing running? Why does quiet surround me? Quietness is one of the avenues. Nothing is one bright resource. The torch trailing behind you, a deliberate beacon. March 15th, 2016. Days when everything must be done later. That school of not now. When the date alarms you, interchange numbers. March 75th, 6021. A fine year to misunderstand. When frightened about elections, I try to recall many things eventually sink. Translations for the reading that never happened. You recommend a book whose main character invites me to dinner. I would have had no idea my host was a fiction. Asked to rewrite the inappropriate lyric, then to sing it on stage. You fall asleep in all the wrong places. Irises and hyacinths are uncertain when to raise their heads. Every storm performs the work of adamant sculptors. The ground is adorned with mottled limbs tulip tree libations. I print out the list of recurring associations, wondering what I've missed. Read about the exile of phenomenal units of sound. Write letters of invitation to words I cannot pronounce. She wrote, I have doubts about my ability to coordinate eventuality. Euphoria wore a minuscule green coterie, a countenance drenched. These next few items can only be referred to as Sisyphus, motion sickness, and the land of one's ancestors. If only naming fecundity could endow me with cover, coven. And the last poem I moved into April. April 15th, 2016. Would it be presumptuous if I were to give her a name? I don't hesitate to affectionately place titles at the top of every stage we go through. Countless scenes in which I am your granddaughter. Today you would have been 104. And this other absence, I'll call her Violet triumphant and numerous, smiling up at me from the lawn, startlingly awake. Impossible to write the word impossible. Instead, I will write how to love our broken paucity. My idea of perfect beforehands isn't even worth rewrapping. Still, I bother to transpose myself it's part of your private profile to see my faithful sidereal transmissions pre-arranged by passing stars. Can you see a lily planting constellations? Her hand looks exactly like mine. What do I do to be that person? Forward flight, forward flight, forward, a careful, solitary friction. Call me when you love it. Leaves, I like your thinking, to write through an entire life, 
nothing, being always fantastic, having read the entire alphabet once, twice, mess with it, off with my head, clear my desk, dis-ease, become other, afraid of prying lists, what have I done? The number of numbers kept us wet and cold, subsisting on syntactical nimbus. You wanted her ring, and I was happy for you to have it. I'm so glad she left me her hands. Thank you. Thank you so much to all of our readers tonight. Thank you, Dara, Lynn, Dolores, Robin, Renee, Lainey. Um, thank you to all, everyone who's here tonight. I put links in the chat uh, to the books that are available for sale and pre-order. That discount code, S-M-O-L, small, is in honor of the Small Fair, which is an all, alternative online fair that is running through Saturday. And that discount code will be valid through the end of the day on Saturday um, to be applied not only to any of the books here, but any of the books on the WAVE website. So um, we encourage you to check it out and thank you again. Please feel free to unmute yourself and say hello to the readers if you like um, and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Night everybody. Thank you, Renee. Thank, thank you, Renee. Thank you, readers. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Thank Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, all. Gracias, Dolores. Gracias, Dolores. Gracias, Robin. Gracias, querido. Qué gusto verte. Cantado. Robin, me faltó un poema. Está bien. <risa> Yo también me lo he preguntado. <risa> Pero estuvo muy bien terminar ahí también. <risa> Gracias. Bye. Bye.